Hello, this is Jiang Wen. The title of the tutorial is Emergent Universal Tooling Machines in Developmental Networks, Vision Audition Natural Languages, APFGP, and Thinking. APFGP is the acronym for Autonomous Programming for General Purposes. The talk will last about three hours and I will have a break in the middle. Those who watch the tutorial through the uh, video can pause the video and uh, have a break. Um, then uh, you can resume the video. The uh, outlines, the first I will talk about why we need auto programming for general purposes, FFGP. It's about the functions of the brain model and also a model for a machine learning on silicons. And I'll review the history of AI and in particular to unify the two major schools in AI, symbolic and connectionist. Number three, I will talk about universal tooling machines, UTM for short. It is a symbolic school, but very useful for us to understand the theory because we are familiar with the symbols and uh, vectors or numerical numbers are harder to understand. So we need to start with the symbolic model. That's the universal tooling machines. Then number four, we talk about brain functions and modeled as the Genesema tooling machines. Genesema is the acronym for eight properties and I'll talk about that later. Then the then goes to detail of each neuron. What each neuron does, the model is a biologically informed model, lobe component analysis, LCA for short. Number six is about functions of the uh, brain or learner, auto programming. Number seven is about motivations that includes reinforcement learning and uh, pain avoidance and pleasure thinking and uh, for uh, other uh, emotions, for example. All right, so the higher functions in terms of the emotions. Uh, in neuroscience, it's collectively called motivation. Then number eight, is about uh, something that's uh, very fundamental and well known. And many people say it's not provable, but it's proved um, by myself. It's called church tooling thesis. And I extend it and approved it. And basically the uh, tooling kind of computation can um, add more components, more sophistication and drive the biological model and to address very high level capabilities that we are not familiar with, but brain does that, all right? Then I talk about experiments um, that include the three bottleneck of AI, vision, audition, natural languages. And the number four is something that's open and then many people in AI still don't understand what that is. It's called the thinking model. And I talk about uh, number four, so one, two, three, a bottleneck um, problem for AI. Uh, many people uh, agree with that. Then number four, it's a new. And I followed um, this uh, um, subject by uh, some discussions. 
Number one, APFGP. The essential theme of this tutorial is about conscious learning. So in other words, that humans, animals on the natural side and robots and machines on the artificial side need consciousness while they learn. So it's kind of uh, upside down. Huh? We saw that we need to have uh, intelligence, then we can talk about in, um, consciousness, but actually they are independent with each other. So you need intelligence to get consciousness, but you also need consciousness to become intelligent. So it's called conscious learning. Conscious is not handcrafted, but must be learned because it's too complex to handcraft. So one fundamental question is that, can machines be conscious? We talk about natural systems, we talk about artificial systems. Over here, that's a setting um, in which I was in New Delhi, India, and I was uh, uh, watching um, hustle and bustles of the city uh, traffic. And this animal um, is uh, uh, walking and I look, uh, I follow him for about 20 minutes. Nobody is uh, following that animal. I think that's a horse and uh, uh, nobody, nobody is, um, it's a, a caretaker. And I think that he can go home alone. That probably uh, very popular in India. And also we have a human that uh, ride a motorcycle. So they are all conscious. They are still learning. Uh, they learn every day, like me, I learn every day, but they need the consciousness to learn. And I'll get to that later. Um, so you both have artificial consciousness and then um, in machines and the natural consciousness in animals, including non-human animals, horse, and uh, human over here. Now, let's talk a little bit about how human train a horse. And uh, this horse is not as uh, smart as a human being, but horse is also very smart. Maybe their brain is not as big as a human. But if you watch the uh, uh, books and all tutorials about how to train a horse, it's extremely illuminating and uh, helpful for us to understand how we are trained actually. Um, many, many details, subtle detail is also true for human learning. Although the, uh, the brain size are very different, all right? So I propose that animals like horse also does APFGP autonomous programming for general purposes. I'm sorry that this should be a P, autonomous programming for general purposes. Let's review a little bit um, about the, uh, uh, what do you mean by consciousness? Um, John Lottie um, 1690 in the AC concerning human understanding that the perception of what passes in a brain, oh, the perception of what passes in a man's own mind. So somehow that you know what you perceived and what you understand, you also know what you don't understand. Let's uh, uh, look at the definition of uh, consciousness. Um, when dictionary that uh, has been very popular is Webster, Merlin Webster Dictionary. It has five levels of definition and from low to high. 
when the state of being aware of something within oneself or outside oneself, in this case, external object, state of fact. Second level, the state of sensation, emotion, volition, thought. The third level, totality of conscious state of an individual. Four, normal state of conscious life. Five, upstate of mental life of which the person is aware. Our consciousness will cover all five levels. You will see that if I program something into a machine or mom program into a baby brain, it won't work. Just too sophisticated and too much. And we need to let the life of machine to learn. Let machine learn consciousness. And I'd like to review an autonomous mental development AMD newsletter. In 2015, there is a dialogue that has to do with uh, consciousness, whether um, user interface needs to have a consciousness. And I responded to the dialogue um, hosted by Janet Wills, and she is the host of the dialogue. My submission of um, consciousness for a social robot is not piecemeal. And uh, Janet Wills, uh, in her uh, summary after um, the end of dialogue, she said, when takes a different position from the other commentaries, starting from the assertion that all aspects of awareness are tightly interrelated and each cannot function without the others. So you see that uh, all the dialogue um, commenters, they did not have a position, let alone a model about consciousness. And I have a model that's a, a developmental network um, at that time, and I was preparing that for, for consciousness. So I think that you must have a, a holistic model. And I was the only guy that positioned myself that consciousness is um, meaningless, will not be productive if we talk about only a piece of meal, but to not have a, a holistic model that can go on and take the full complexity of life. Christopher Koch in 2018 um, wrote in Scientific Americans, consciousness is everything you experience. It is the tune stuck in your head, the sweetness of chocolate mousse, the uh, throbbing pain of toothache, the fierce love for your child and the bitter knowledge that eventually all feeling will end. So that this is a kind of layman's word for the definition of uh, um, William Webster dictionary. So you can see that uh, it's a very low level, like if you the sweet, right? To you understand that life uh, will not run forever. I'd like to raise that AI currently is in a crisis, although uh, not many people agree with me. AI is very hot, but mainly from medium hype. AI is a long track. I'll talk about the post-selection um, in a minute. AI is not nascent, as many people said that because AI already had 70 years of history, over 70. And AI is largely blind at this point. And AI is brainless. I'm not saying that this is easy, but I'd like to uh, let you know that my model is probably the first model about the brain, all right? So the time is over. Brainless time of AI is over. 
why AI is a crisis, but many people just don't want to listen. You talk about the brain, that's my, not my problem. I have a very good friend of mine who is a neuroscientist, a neuropsychologist, and he said, John, brain is not my model. So, sorry, he didn't say that. He said, brain is not my job. He's a neuroscientist and he publishing attention, um, recognition, but he did not want to address the brain problem. I respect Hubert Drayford and he has a book, uh, What Computers Cannot Do. And here is a second book about the same subject, What Computers Still Cannot Do. And I think that although Hubert Drefford um, passed away and his books are still relevant, in his book, um, Table One on page 292, he raised something type four in non-formal intelligence, not like formal intelligence, like, like algebra, uh, like counting, like logic. Game plan, okay, non formal intelligence. Activities depending on non explicit meaning in situations. So basically, that your daily activities, it's hard to really formalize it, non explicit meaning in situation. I get to that later on. The model will address this, all this. Learn by perspicuous examples. The examples are Perspicuous and not very clear, but human get it, and uh, a machine will not. This kind of program that take care of these three dots, there's no such kind of program. But this tutorial will change this situation. I would say that if Hubert is still around, I said, Hubert, the end is like that, the first one in the world. Now, why I say that AI is a cri in a crisis, and I submitted a report uh, to Nature. Since 2015, all 15 AI papers appeared in Nature are flawed in protocols. And if you're interested, you probably can um, go to the, uh, the URL and read the report. Uh, by the way, that, um, Nature didn't get a reasonable response um, from the, uh, the authors, um, only received very few uh, responses. And uh, Nature did not feel that it can um, do anything uh, further at this point. Uh, so Nature suggested me to find another platform to pursue this effort. The same thing for science. And, uh, post-selection AI paper in also in science since 2015, an appropriate protocol. And I'll talk about the post-selection later on. And this protocol is like, um, just at the beginning, I'll give you some idea. Suppose I have many, many greedy uh, learners. Uh, they're really not smart, all right? And I would let them try um, some small contained problems with a lot of data, it's a big data, but small problem. And I would, try everybody on the test set, not on West uh, uh, training set, because neural net do not abstract well. Do not abstract well means that it cannot generalize well. But I test the, this greedy train network on the test set. And uh, whatever is the luckiest one, and I say, this is my performance, and I kill everybody else. So that's a violation of the engineering protocol because you cannot test, you cannot do a post selection of network based on test set. And if you're interested, you can uh, read this report. Let's look at the, uh, uh, the traditional uh, paradigm. And you basically, a uh, human, programmers handcraft sensing and and they said sensing is already grounded and I don't think so. I like grounded is a very deep. 
handcrafted 3D model or class labels. And uh, you already have a task uh, uh, to start with machine. Start with a task. It's like um, there is a talk in BBC recently, uh, an AI expert that what's AI? AI I start with task. And I train the, uh, uh, the machine for the task and then execute the task. And that's intelligence. And that's a task a specific way. And it's not intelligence. It's just like calculator, all right? The calculator doing doing arithmetics, and I, I program the rules and it just do the number crunching. But the calculator is not smart. It's just two. All the AI systems over uh, in what you read uh, um, from the literature, they just are two, all right? Because the handcraft, the representation. And drawbacks is a piecemeal solution and not integrated for um, intelligence and uh, consciousness. And it will brittle because if the uh, setting goes beyond the task specification, it's basically task specification is very, very narrow. And there's no way to test that the environment has fit this uh, specification or not. So the system will break. And what um, it will, if the uh, environment does not satisfy the implicit assumption of the task, then the system breaks and it's very brittle. So the world has a perception and a generated action. Um, it says this is consciousness and this is oversimplification. And, and we are blind. We are blind to many multiple billion dollar questions. Um, sometimes people call the million dollar questions. And I think the million dollars is not enough. And I, I think there are probably more than this, but I only list a few, all right? The frame problem, some people call it a simple uh, Brandy problem, curse of domination problem, internal representation problem, nonlinear controller problem, local minima problems, consciousness machine problems like that. And uh, in fact, um, the, the method here uh, addressed all. So you really need a holistic solution to address one problem. So it's like either you have all solutions or none at all. And the recent paper that I'm drafting right now has a $20 million questions that are holistically solved by the material here. And I saw the, uh, the solved, I, I said this uh, green problem has been solved. But I did not solve all the problems over here. All right, he said that this is the problem here, and this is already the agreement. Use the emergent representation solve the frame, bro, uh, frame pro, uh, problem, and a loop component analysis um, to solve uh, cost dimensionality problem. And the key issue is the competition. All the error back part does not have a competition. And DN address internal uh, representation problem, APFGP solve the linear problem, the linear condition, not just the linear, and it's a, it's a full logic in terms of PFGP uh, in the sense of uh, uh, universal uh, toy machines. And the local minima problem was solved the maximum likelihood um, optimality. It's optimal based on three conditions, and I'll get to that later, three learning conditions. If the three learning conditions are the same, the end is optimal, and you don't need to compare with anybody else. All right, and it's a uh, 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 conscious machines solved by conscious learning. I like to go back. This is that that there are at least a uh, total of the twenty. There are something that I did not solve all the problems. One problem that I really like to raise is the. Uh, uh, hardware issues, and we need a brain size, uh, brain noid uh, chip that learns um, brain size learning engine in real time. And this kind of hardware probably does not exist. Um, um, Intel Loihi 2 is interesting, and we are uh, looking to this uh, um, hardware whether it's a SUS it's appropriate for the end. And I, 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 I don't know at this point. 
So a brain is like elephant. And each discipline is like a brain man. Biology, neuroscience, psychology, electrical engineering, computer science, and mathematics. And uh, we probably get a PhD, a degree in a particular uh, discipline, but even a discipline was, uh, each discipline was designed for jobs. Um, and uh, but was not designed for brain. Brain has a huge spend of knowledge in terms of the breadth and the depth. By the way, I have a computer science in training. Um, I understand fully, and I have a, a lot of background in mathematics, and I get benefit from the fact that my two advisors at the UIUC are electrical engineering, and I get a lot of uh, uh, experience of learning um, and taking courses in electrical engineering. And I, after I got to MSU, I sit in psychological courses. And uh, I also learned, uh, took uh, audition um, with neuroscience courses. And uh, BMI, uh, Brain My Institute also has a uh, biology courses. And uh, during my sabbatical, and I have an opportunity to work uh, at MIT um, to uh, work with psychologists, um, psycho neuroscientists. And um, so I have a luck um, to get exposure of all. And that's why it took so long. I already retired. Um, I have took early retirement this year. Um, so it's kind of interesting that by the time I retired and I, I had a pleasure to, to look into all the discipline. By the way, there is a physics and I'm interested in physics too. And I did not list the physics because many people say physics is everything. But I look at it, fixed paper, they probably concentrate on certain aspects. Um, but uh, if you talk about like the computer science, you submit it to a uh, physics problem will be rejected. Now human that APFGP and this is AP piece here, correct? All right, APFGP. Auto, the, this A could be automatic or autonomous. And I originally, I thought it's automatic um, so people can uh, understand better, but in fact, it's autonomous. And it's not just auto in terms of a vehicle, for example, right? moving forward and make turns, uh, it's autonomous, just like this one, okay? This vehicle is autonomous. Autonomous programming for general purposes. And so give example that if you build a car, this brain is doing APFGP. And the question that we like to uh, ask is that what's the minimal set of mechanism that enabled APFGP? And I'll get to that in this tutorial, all right? Why robot have, have to do APFGP? And uh, the key, and the robot must learn on their own. It cannot just uh, spoon feed data into robot. For, that, for example, a robot initiate, design, and make new scenes themselves, like human. And uh, robots must be conscious during learning. So it's like recurrence. Huh? You need a little bit consciousness to learn the next piece of knowledge. Then the, 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 when you learn the knowledge, you need uh, uh, also help to the next cycle. So consciousness and learning, they, they depend on each other. So you need this holistic solution to the multiple uh, billion dollar problems. So the new in this tutorial is called Conscious Learning that I published in ICDL 2020. At that time, only talk about the sensory motor learning and uh, uh, later on, I will talk about imitation. I will uh, 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 cover uh, imitation. So basically don't need to do sensory motor learning. Um, basically, the uh, the uh, it's a totally autonomous. You don't need to be supervised. 
So the consider is not handcrafted uh, intelligence. Uh, as, as there is a minimum set of uh, mechanism found, which is uh, called uh, universal Tory machines, uh, but emergent, all right? And that emergent model that can emerge its representation and the entire model is holistic in terms of brain and it's fully detailed in computation so they can implement by a machine without uh, uh, ambiguities. And uh, it's uh, overarching, it cover everything up to consciousness, the five levels that we, design, uh, we defined in the dictionaries. And uh, you can also applicable to, uh, um, the model is applicable to small brains like flu shot, fruit fry, I'm sorry, like a fry, like fruit fry, to large one like uh, primate and humans. So the same model, the uh, minimal set of mechanism applied to small brains and large brains. But you need the lifelong learning, all right? So lifelong conscious learning for higher consciousness and the consciousness takes place all life and not just outcome. So consciousness is not just outcome of programming and of spoof feeding, but rather also the causality of the intelligence we observed from animals, all right? The definition here, here conscious learning is that the conscious learning by a biological or artificial machine is that the learner is conscious throughout its life learning, lifetime learning, all right? It boosts its consciousness from default consciousness, default like um, um, at birth time, to increasingly consciousness in the later time life, to a maturely conscious, all right? There are a lot of material there, and uh, I'd like to uh, say that if you really want to get a full knowledge and it's easier to look it up, you should read the book. Um, and the book, uh, the first edition and second edition, um, title is Natural and Artificial Intelligence by myself. In the book, um, I, I think it's the first chapter, I talk about the tasks, there are three categories, clean tasks, muddy tasks, and a very muddy task. A very muddy task, including learning new muddy subjects, you need to move on to new subjects without reprogramming, continue living, create a new knowledge of higher value, like consciousness, uh, like discovery, like creativity. And this book is available at uh, Amazon. History of AI. As I said that AI is pretty long, over 70 years, but about the human intelligence that uh, started long time ago, in 15 BC, we have Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, and at that time they would talk about the philosophy mostly. And uh, 1500s, we have Leibniz, uh, Lockheed, and uh, Descartes, 1800, we have Pablo um, Somdike. 1900, we have and um, McCullough. Um, they are pretty um, important role um, in neural networks. And I think neural networks start from actual electronic and his 1950 papers. And uh, that's before Lumenhardt and uh, um, McCullough. Then uh, um, since then, 1950s, and the machine start to be involved in intelligence. Ellen's uh, 1950 papers um, proposed, not just a Turing test actually, he proposed that we publish the think about um, train uh, a child and subject to education. And uh, so, but many people start to, look into um, Turing test, um, which is kind of unfortunate. And that's not probably what Alan Turing intended. But now we have observed in natural intelligence and artificial intelligence is a fragmentation in both uh, disciplines. 
And in NI, um, without computations, um, since like uh, Plato and Aristotle. And in AI, and we have little consciousness. And um, 1950, Alan Tolin's paper has an uh, uh, interesting discussion on many, many aspects. And I was really impressed. And I think that our latecomers um, should read his original paper so that don't get misled um, by the Tolin test. And uh, the NI are fragmented and AI is fragmented. And I think that's not because the, the problem itself um, is fragmented, but we artificially break it and try to say, hey, we saw pieces problem, maybe the, the entire solution will come out when we have many, many problems, but each problem is not a solution. It's not a solution. Each piece of solution is not a global solution. We must really revisit the entire problem. So when we design each piece, we have a global picture in mind. The same is true for natural intelligence and artificial intelligence. Alan Turing, um, 1936, he proposed a Turing machine and this model for general compose computers nowadays. And Alan Turing um, raised the issue that can machine think? And he said it's not very meaningful to ask, uh, answer this question or even to ask. He proposed a Turing test. And it's a totally symbolic AI school. I do not brand him, but he did mention um, network like neurons, all right? And uh, then we have, um, at that time he already, because he already mentioned the neurons. So the, the symbolic AI school and the connectionist schools have at least uh, as long as a history um, since 1950. Now over 70 years, AI has been on the wrong track I think the many are on track because break as a huge problem, uh, we lose our vision. And we start looking to piecemeal solutions and, uh, and we are not really moving ahead. Um, it's a horizon effect. It's like you think you are moving forward each steps, but the uh, horizon is still very, very far away, all right? And the issue is the task specific many programming and we must give up no matter how many people we publish. And uh, I solved this uh, holistic problem, APFGP. Um, you are interested in the International Journal of Humanoid Robotics 2020. And uh, in the 2020 ICDL, I proposed uh, consciousness learning and in 2021, I proposed um, unsupervised conscious learning and was rejected. And the same thing I submitted later on to the uh, AI is also rejected. And reviewers just couldn't understand the material. They don't bother to follow the literature, our literature, and they don't bother to understand it. They couldn't understand it by a huge margin just from the their comments. So here we have a symbolic school, we have connection in schools, and uh, um, as uh, uh, Marvin Minsky said that uh, uh, symbolic school symbols are logic and clean, and uh, uh, connection in schools um, are analogical and scrappy, dirty. And uh, then we over here, we have a handcrafted representation that we build um, um, common sense knowledge base. Um, over here, we have neural networks and we have connection convolution neural networks, L long short term memory systems, and uh, deep learnings. And this kind of very, very misleading because the neural net still do not abstract well. And we have a wrong protocols and uh, we create uh, inflated uh, performance data that turns out to be protocolly flawed. And I think this is the time that we need to look into the unification of APFGP on the framework of APFGP. So both schools can contribute tremendously. Right? instead of fighting 
and has been um, these two schools has been uh, fighting with each other and when the not look into other camps. It's kind of very unfortunate. Let's look at the symbolic school. Um, I uh, uh, used the uh, um, earlier researchers, uh, very well known, Kim Sam Fu. And he was looking into syntactic pattern recognition. Suppose I want to recognize the E, then we have uh, uh, symbols for each stroke, uh, A1, B1, A2, B2, A3. Then I, I put some um, parameters and allow them to be flexible, but those symbols are still there and then can uh, deal with uh, different shapes. And the problem is that uh, who built this representation? Human, handcrafted, the symbol of these jokes. And uh, symbolic school um, typically as a task specific and uh, static has a symbol, each symbol represent a meaning. Give example that each symbol represent uh, say a particular task a particular goal, a particular purpose, a particular context, a particular law, a particular features. And uh, because a human cannot exhaust all the word, right? everything the word, and I will read the uh, prove that this kind of uh, a combination is exponential. So the system may lean to cases that go beyond this handcrafted, very limited uh, micro word, then the system will break. It's pretty tall. And for neural network, I like to mention um, Kunihiko Fukushima, and uh, his work uh, is very influential. And I think that somehow that uh, many people nowadays um, use his framework, and I did the same, um, except that he handcrafted a um, number of layers and feature in it. He told me uh, honestly that the human selected features, um, you have uh, each plane over here, plane is a feature, and uh, you have a number of features here, and, uh, and you have convolution to, con to apply the same feature detect on every pixel locations. And uh, then uh, the value of goodness match is represented as a map. And you have a different feature, different feature. Then over here, you have a large receptive field, right? Because this is a, each uh, firing will correspond to this receptive field. And you have more neuron here and uh, we'll get to here. And the receptive field of this neuron will be larger, much larger, right? So you increase a receptive field by, by a factor. And uh, uh, in this case, um, Fukushima probably in other respect, the, the problem is just overwhelming. So he, he must handcraft uh, the features because he's looking into an input of isolated numerals, zero to nine, all right, with some distortion, but only one, all right, uniform background with probably some in the noise. And uh, so, so basically he increased number of receptive field and then over here, then it will present a digit, all right, say zero to nine. And uh, the architecture is like this one is a, a simple cell and a complex cell, simple cell, complex cell. In Fukushima case, the simple cell is learned from samples and a human selected. Complex cell is not learned, but it's, a, it's more like um, logic then increase this, this pair SC is like here, and uh, SC is here, SC, 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 this is like a pair here, all right? And uh, the, the hollow triangle is variable interconnections and the uh, solid angle over here is fixed interconnections. And uh, in 1999, a uh, year before uh, 2000, uh, we had uh, the, the mass auto develop and we introduced the concept for, uh, for development of uh, life uh, from inception time to newborn to adulthood. This is prenatal development and a postnatal development. 
So we had a, a workshop uh, 2000 funded by National Science Foundation in DAPA. It's called Workshop on Development and Learning. Then uh, um, we, uh, we have seven courses, uh, load uh, policy fallen piece uh, submitted to the science. And the key concept of that piece was task non specificity. And so basically, go beyond the task specific program paradigm at that time. And the developmental network, it, the law is like a genome. All right? We model the genome function, but not really use the genome coding because we don't know much about the uh, genome coding at this point only. And the program is pretty small, uh, only two page long, but it's a general purpose. And then we have ICD conferences. We have uh, AMD technical committees. And uh, since 2001, I'm kind of in, um, puzzled. Uh, US government paused funding to me and uh, all my proposals submitted to, um, to government was rejected, but they funded um, my colleagues on traditional machine learning. Then we have uh, um, IEEE transaction on IMD and later on it changed name um, to IEEE transaction on cognitive developmental systems. The main concern is that uh, people look at the mental people probably um, did not even know what the mental is, right? The, the aim here and uh, people probably more uh, familiar with cognitive. So the new name is IEEE transaction on cognitive and developmental systems. And it's like a uh, step backwards. I understand that actually we need to uh, have uh, more subscriptions um, into the, uh, the journals. And uh, we have a developmental network, um, well, what network embodiment, and WWN1 through WWN9. Then we have uh, APFGP at 2020. And the history of deep learning, uh, I would like to uh, give credit to Paul Wilbur's Elbeck prop, but I think it's kind of fraud because the multi uh, selection, post selection of many networks trend. And the Fukushima's uh, neocognition, it's about 2D recognition and uh, uh, monolithic. Um, because didn't talk about multiple objects in the cluttered scene. And uh, me, Ahuja and Huang at the UIUC uh, published a perception. And uh, it's the first deep learning for 3D and it have seven new ideas. If you're interested you go to my website and you should be able to see. And my website was listed at the first page. And uh, then uh, uh, ImageNet came up and it become really popular, but data falsification and misleading claims to exceed human performance. And if you're interested, go to YouTube, uh, my video explain uh, why it's a uh, uh, falsification of data, inflated data. And Google, um, uh, 20, 04 founded 40 million to demand, and suddenly uh, machine learning becomes um, hot. But the problem is the protocol fraud. I'll get to that. And, uh, but the first deep learning for 3D is Cresceptron, all right? It's without uh, a 3D model, and so for 3D. And all the deep learning uh, nowadays was uh, uh, highly, highly cited as 3D, right? And there's a huge difference in between 2D and 3D because 3D, you really need to integrate, uh, automatically build the network in its full complexity like renders, then you need to integrate. And this is the seven new ideas and I'll talk about 3D detection and recognition both. 
handle scales and a stride. Um, large scales really are just um, huge numbers uh, of possibilities and they use feature matching and subsampling together uh, in the paired fashion and they use position blurlings um, based on probability, like fuzzy idea, but really a uh, probability. And it's the uh, mass polling idea. The mass polling idea later on, I did not use the mass polling, I used maximization. But later on, I picked up the name called mass polling. And um, George and uh, Shimizu Huber um, uh, recognized um, Christoph Trump was the first to use mass polling, but not just mass polling, the novelty of mass polling um, is just one of the seven. And it does segmentation too. It's the first network that does detection, recognition, and segmentation, all three together. And I raised the a question about celebrities uh, plagiarized perception. And I cited uh, Fukushima. Then we have a uh, Cresceptum, um, started in 1991. Then the journal version came out in uh, 1997. By the way, that I just very well-known neural networks. ICCV is probably one of the best uh, conference on computer vision and IJCV is one of the best journal on computer vision. So it's very unlikely they don't read the conceptual, not possible, not possible. Unless they don't know research, they don't know how to research because this is the first network learning 3D without a 3D model. Then uh, Lacom and Banjo, um, they uh, start to use the idea of 1998. And Apollo, um start to use the idea called HMAX, uh, is that in PME? And Li Fei Fei um, used the, this idea of appearance-based method, although he, she did not use the uh, uh, deep architecture. Um, her PhD is 2005 at Caltech, but did not cite Cresceptum. Lacombe NIPS 2005, did not cite Cresceptum. And you need ICML 2009, use the ideas, did not cite Epsepchum. And uh, uh, Jeffrey Hinden, um, NIPS uh, 2012. I said over here that. That I say, since this is since in the time they start to use 3D, uh, they start to use 3D, go beyond the 2D, just pattern recognition, 3D is vision. Then uh, um, those day years, um, and this is 91, later on, this is the earliest one is like seven years after. See that? All right. They uh, did not cite. And Google Staffers and Fei Fei Li on 2014 start to do 3D using basically the same ideas. They imitate uh, Cresceptum. It's a copy. And uh, many neural networks are in crisis. And the problem, I listed just a few major problems. Open skull, allow human to interact with the hidden neurons. Post selections are many learning networks trained. See how to avoid both. Uh, we can avoid both, but brain does not do open skull, brain does not do post selection because every life must develop normally, right? We cannot just pick up the luckiest one and kill the uh, remaining uh, human beings. So it's closed scout, it use only one network, and perception was doing incrementally, perception only developed one network, only one. Uh, but it's not optimal. And uh, it uses the unsupervised learning. Once it detect new patterns, then you generate a feature on the fly. It's not optimal, but does not really refine the features. And DN is optimal in maximum likelihood. It does refine based on later finding of the neurons. And I'd like to congratulate um, um, Turing Award um, to uh, 
three uh, researchers, Hinton, Benjo, and Lacombs. My question is whether their data and results are falsified. Connection schools are motivated by neuron-like computations. Many artificial neural networks are symbolic actually, because once you use the label, I am I'm guilty because the perception also use the label, huh? because it takes time to understand um, just using label for class, use a symbol for class label, it's already damaging, extremely damaging. Huh? Just a couple of days ago, some people said to me, I don't care. I don't care the brand. And I just look at the performance. Look, the performance are falsified. It's give you the impression, illusion. Uh, give me the illusion. It's kind of cheating. Give you an example that suppose you each line corresponding to a symbolic concept. And uh, if you have a, a symbolic concept, then you cannot go beyond these symbol, symbols. And it's a black box and do brute force data fitting and a network do not uh, fit well because there's no mechanism to avoid um, local minima. Then uh, I do post selection, all right? You pick up the luckiest one and luckiest one on the de test set. If you do well on the test set, but do not do very well in the new test set, it's like a test problem has been leaked out. And are these kind of network less brittle? No, no, because they do P, A, P, F, G, they, they do a uh, post selection, uh, P, S, U, T, S, post selection using test set. So I alleged uh, fraud in Turing Award um, work. Um, 2018, if you're interested, you can uh, look at uh, my YouTube, uh, BM Talks, single word, brand mind talks, BM Talk. B-M-T-A-L-K. And the limitation of connection schools, um, it's open scope. The first fundamental problem, all right? So human intervene into the neural network, try to put into gate and try to shut off some, um, some update, whatever. That's a, a look at the data. Human look at the data, then the implant mechanism just for this data, but not for other data, all right? So that's kind of a protocol flawed. And uh, the post selection, use the test set like a training set. Report only the luckiest network. No static, uh, statical validation of, for lux of data order, random seeds, because start from uh, 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 learning uh, seeds, different seeds will lead, lead to different um, performance, very different uh, performance. My, our data is like between like 20% error and 80% error like that. And there are a lot of hybrid parameters. And uh, that's why you can see that there are uh, uh, many, many authors um, from a, a group. Um, many, many people, those people are heavily involved in the hand tuning of the hyperparameters. So APFGP avoids these problems. Autonomous programming for general purposes. So inside the skull is totally automatic. And uh, using heavy learning, I'll get to that, all right? And the SNAP maintenance and there's no need um, for human intervention. And the skull is closed through the entire life. Outside skull and the natural environment, you may have teachers, you may have trainers as a part of the environment and sensed by the sensors and interact with the factors. But you don't have to have a, a human because they are uh, um, like, um, uh, like animals. They can, they can learn um, on their own. All right. 